are you really really interested in learning this language or are you just one of those who are just happy to say oh, my parents didn't teach me anyway so it's not my problem so then just hide under that canopy that they didn't teach you or even if that is the case what other aspect of your cultural heritage or identity are you interested in Hello everyone, my name is Mabel and I'm popularly known on this channel as Ati Mabel. I'm currently doing a series of videos that is trying to address the barriers that we are likely to encounter when learning a new language. And in my last video, I covered the most common barrier, which is parents' failures to teach their children their language. And in today's video, I'm going to follow it up with what the children now need to do as their next step to move on from learning this language. So I, this video is going to address young people. You could be teenager, you could now be an adult in your 20s, 30s. 40s 50s or even older and you now want to you still you now want to learn this language so today i'm going to explore areas how you can be supported to learn your this language because i believe it's never too late to learn so first thing first before i we even try to address or explore the options and the support system that you have out there we need to first of all establish one thing. Are you really, really interested in learning this language? Or are you just one of those who are just happy to say, oh, my parents didn't teach me anyway, so it's not my problem. So then just hide under that canopy that they didn't teach you. Or even if that is the case, what other aspect of your cultural heritage or identity are you interested in? So I will first of all address those who are interested in learning this language. So first thing first, if you are interested in learning this language, I will want to say that there are a lot of resources out there to teach you. For example, my YouTube channel, I'm trying to teach my simple dialect. And I know there are a lot of books, there are a lot of apps, and other things that can teach you as well. So um, there is one-to-one -one tutoring. So I know there are a lot of platforms on YouTube, like someone teaching the Edo language, some people teaching the Igbo language, Igbo language, some people teaching the Yoruba language. So you name it, they are all there. And even ESA, I'm very proud to say that um, if you if you are not aware, if you go in my video, I will put the link in the comment section. There's a young man whom I came across when I first started my YouTube channel, Antonio Taigbe, based in US. He started learning ASA when he was in his teenage years. And he went further to actually now develop an app an ESA language, in ESA language we call it ZESA. So you can see that even you, the younger ones, if you are really, really keen in learning the language, whatever your struggles are in learning, you can actually turn that into a stepping stone to develop something that could make other people to learn better. And there are ways we are actually trying to create a community. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing this series of videos. So that we can actually try and create a community of our young people, of our young adults, be you in your teenage years, be you in your 20s or older adults, and that want to now teach your children as well, so that you will find a way to try and support you to learn this language. So I'm going to try and list some of these things. I've just kind of give a summary of how you can learn this language if you are really keen in learning it. So, but while we are saying that, I will also want to admonish the parents here. 
because in my conversation with Anthony, um, he kind of said that when they are learning their language, this language, their language, or whatever the language their parents fail to teach their parents' language, which is their language which they are passionate about, and because there are a lot of advantages they learning it. For example, Anthony said, "Oh, he made him whole when he was able to speak his language." And it's because his parents really, really supported him and all the other adults around him support him, supported him. So that's one thing I really need to say to our parents. If you're young, because the young people that are learning on my channel, some of them will say, oh, I'm learning. Auntie Mabel, I'm learning so that I can speak more to my parents. When they are learning this language and they are trying to speak to us, we shouldn't laugh at them. We shouldn't tease them. We should encourage them. And even if it's by voice note, you're going to be sending them WhatsApp is so good now that you can do so much. So if there's an expression they want to find out from you, um, they say it to you. And if it's not exactly how you say it in your dialect, because I know some sometimes not every English expression that can be translated directly to our dialect, just explain to them that oh, we don't really say that that way, we don't really have the correlation word to word, but this is the similarity, this is what is nearest to it. So they really need our support. And those of us who are now having grandchildren, and it's an opportunity to try and teach our grandchildren alongside their parents. So if, for example, your ch grandchildren, you speak to them on the phone, or they come to visit you, so we can start learning to speak to them. So it's difficult, but it's doable. It's something we all we are going to try and start making effort to do. Then that's learning the language on one side, and also the young people as well. I came across a video years ago where there was this club in Peckham, somewhere in the UK, where some young people, young mostly was mostly young ladies and their children. They had this club a uh, day play club they were all going to where somebody was teaching them Yoruba they were learning alongside their babies and their toddlers and their young children so that let's start forming the community of how we can come together with zoom and so many other resources out there and there are ways we can start forming this community where we can learn together for, uh, no matter how far apart we are is doable so if you have people from your community who have children as well and who are keen to learn this and who are really interested in learning your language or your dialect let's these are the things you the young adult can do and come together in the community to learn even those who don't have children you can still be willing to want to keen to learn the way anthony did in his teenage years he said he started learning when he was about 18 so you can really do it if you really want to do it so please Let's not throw in the tower here. Let's not feed because there are a lot of other areas our parents, even my parents or we now have failed the next generation. You're not going to say, okay, like especially the way people used to punish their children when in our time or which some people, some people still carry on doing, especially those who are based in Nigeria. So, but the younger parents now decide, deciding not to do that anymore. So there are a lot of things we are moving away from. So also, when we want to learn this as well, there are ways we can learn it. So I'm just try, trying to throw this out there that we can do it. Let's not f feel that it's not doable. It's just the interest. Are you really interested? Right. I'm going to move away from that now to those who are interested in other areas. So I know there are people who just the language is not their thing. And even their parents might have tried to speak to them because I know a lot of young, I know some uh, young adults who will say, out of five siblings, it was only one particular one who learned to speak, who learned from the grandmother or the grandparents who were around, who were coming around at the time. They are now adults in their twenties and thirties and forties who learned from their grandparents or who were really, really interested in the language and learn it out of the whole lot of the siblings. So, so also, many of you. Uh, you really need to dig deep into this. I, ju I think it's really important that any one aspect of our identity is, is worked on. We shouldn't just forget, forget it. For example, you might be interested in 
the any of the Nigerian language, any of the Nigerian languages, music in any, it could be any of type of music anyway, not even in your dialect. It could be in your dialect because one of the ways they say you could learn last time is through music. It could be the arts, it could be the food, it could be the dressing, because I know in the past, don't now, because most of the Nigerian uh, style of clothing are very trendy now. They are very beautiful and the styles are so beautifully made that our young people, our young adults want to wear them now. Unlike before when it was just booba and that bubu and shokoto for the men and you know, so people were not really too keen on wearing them. So there are so many things, ways you can do that. Uh, also, could it be food? So you still live in a home. Learn to cook some Nigerian dishes that you like to eat. There are some of us who, some of the younger adults who really, really like some aspect of Nigerian food. It's not only jollof rice that make that's not only food that is Nigerian food. There's so much that is unique to your dialect and to your particular area where your parents are from. While you are still at home, please learn them. Learn to cook those food. It doesn't take anything away from you. So also, if it's um, traveling, traveling to Nigeria to go and visit places, there is so much out there. Especially there are YouTubers, somebody like Modi, uh, Woody Maya, somebody like uh, uh, Tayo Aina, and so many other people who are showing all the fantastic places in Nigeria. Even Sisi Yemi showed something recently about a, a, an out in an area in Lagos that is so beautiful. So if you really want to explore things in Nigeria, it could even be business and politics. Please don't leave the business and politics to only the godfathers. It could, you could even be living outside of the country. You have something to contribute to the politics and the business of Nigeria. So, or any other Africa country that you come from. So let's not think, oh, because I don't speak the language, I can't do other things. There are so many other things you can do to make sure that this nation, this our country, Nigeria and other African countries, the things that are going in, okay, many of us are sitting down blaming the Chinese are taking over our continent. Uh, we are all sitting down uh, in Europe or America or which other, other part of the country, even those who are in Nigeria, in big, big cities, and we are just blaming the government. What do we have? What, what do we have in our hands? What are the five loaves of bread and two fishes that you have in your hand, my dear young adults, that you can use to make Nigerian or Africa, your Africa country better? If we don't, if we just sit down here, we all continue to complain about Chinese taking over our continent, then we don't do nothing about it. We don't, we're not doing anything about it. Then we don't have anyone to blame when in the future, we don't have a nation to call our own. So um, I, I hope I'm getting the message home to as many of us as possible so that we just appreciate where we come from. I know that there's so much out there. Okay, I know, okay, in doing this, I need to speak to parents at this stage. I know there are some parents who either even live in big cities in Nigeria Maybe you could live in Lagos, in Abuja. And we always talk so bad of your hometown, your family. Or you could be living in Diaspora, living in the UK or any other part of Europe or in US. Or any other part or even any other part of Africa. You just so much demonize your, um, the part where you are from, your hometown. You claim that they are witches and wizards or your village people that are pursuing you. Uh, so you've never really taken these children home. They are not adults. Some of them are yearning. They've never really visited home. So even you, the young adults now, you are in your 20s, 30s, 40s or whatever, you have the ability to get up and go to those countries. You might not know anybody, but there are ways you can still create some links. And I think we, the, you, the young adult, I'm really, I'm really passionate about this. If there's any way I can set up a platform that we encourage the young adult to start working together, because you cannot tell me there must be somebody of your family member who either live in Abuja, because all these years that you've lived in whatever part you grow up in, either be in a city or wherever you grow up in, or outside of Nigeria. 
there must have been an uncle and auntie or some relative you have been speaking to your mom obviously relate with somebody in nigeria your parents i mean your mom and dad obviously relate with somebody in nigeria you can still connect with those people and decide to visit abuja or lagos and just explore i do understand that things have become very dicey now especially with because of this the new evil that's now befall our country nigeria of how people are being uh, even the kidnapping and all those other stuff that is going on but there are still safe way of living in nigeria so let us not feel that we have to abandon that nation i watch a lot of youtubers like someone like yvonne and some other young ladies and some young men as well who have even especially in ghana and other part of africa or kenya who have relocated or even some adults like myself who have relocated from uh, Kenya, uh, from uh, other U US or UK or other European countries are relocated back to either Kenya, Ghana or Nigeria. There are quite a lot of them who are taking up professions in Nigeria. They could be in their, maybe their music industry or they are in the media or they've just gone there to set up their own business. Even Woody Meyer was in Nigeria recently and was showcasing some some of the YouTubers or uh, not YouTubers, some people who have left all this for uh, other diasporas and who have left travel who have left, moved from diaspora to nigeria one of them she show, he showcased who is now having a furniture company and he's doing really well i know during this um during this pandemic there was another company that i saw in nigeria who used to make a uh, sport clothes and who now uh, switch over and started uh, making um uh, things um, i mean the garment and stuff that were pandemic related so people are still able to succeed in that country so i really what i'm really going to say in this video in, in a no share is this what are you passionate about are you just happy to live in one of the big city in Niger cities in nigeria where you are living in or in any other africa country where you're living in or in 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 the the diaspora you uk you us or wherever you're living in or you're just happy to live your life there well that's fine but even while you are there don't let your identity or your cultural heritage be completely neglected there must be something you're interested in identify that thing and hold on to that if you're interested in learning the language Search for ways of learning that language. If you can't find that resources, find other group of people you can come together and create one. It is doable. So for the young people, for the young adult teenagers and all the others who parents haven't taught enough of this, who the parents didn't pass on enough of their language, food, other cultural heritage to, please think carefully. And don't fade the next generation as possibly the, 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 our generation have failed. We can still redeem the time before it is too late. So, on that note class, on that note everybody, I'm going to say please subscribe to my channel as usual, as I say always. Please leave me comments in the comment section so that we can keep this dialogue going. Because leave some suggestions and some areas, some ways you have learned languages, some ways you have developed aspect of your culture, of your cultural heritage, some ways you have learned to cook your food, whatever areas you are passionate about, please just tell us. And um, so we can start dialoguing together. We can't let this, um, we can't just keep quiet or we can't stop. No, do we have to do something? We have to redeem the time. So please, I'll be looking for your, looking forward to your comment, and at the same time, please share this video. You know the drill. Um, share and uh, leave your notification bell on. I'm going to continue with a few more series on how we can address uh, these barriers. And on that note, everyone, bye. And uh, in Esa, as usual, as I always say in this video, is Wabulu which is thank you, thank to everyone, and goodbye, which is Vakimboy, Vakimboy, class Vakimboy.